What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2017 Nissan GTR Nismo. Huge thanks to Nissan for providing me with this very sweet Nismo GTR to review for you guys today. Also huge thanks to the Automotive Video Association for arranging this car and 11 other awesome cars and SUVs for the first ever Automotive Video Awards, which brings six of the best car reviewers in video and myself together to decide which is the best performance car and performance SUV of the year. So about the 2017 GTR Nismo, well it gets all the same great updates as the standard 2017 GTRs, but now you have it in Nismo form, which is the top of the line, fastest, most aggressive one there is. So I love these new headlights you have here for 2017. They're really sharp and aggressive looking. And this whole car looks so over the top aggressive with that huge carbon fiber rear spoiler, the huge carbon fiber front lip and side skirts. I mean, everything about this car, it just looks like it's like a cartoon character or something. It's just so animated and loud and in your face. And it's just so much fun to look at. I love all the red accents accents and uh, I mean man for the Nismo one they really went for it I mean it's not like the standard GTR looks boring by any means but this thing really looks bold and aggressive and it's just an awesome thing to look at. Right, so the interior of the 2017 GTR Nismo, well, it just screams excitement and it's just so special feeling in here. Anyway, first things first, sitting down in these seats, these are these Recaro Nismo GTR seats, which certainly feel like they hug a lot tighter than the standard GTR seats um, and just feel really great though. They're still pretty comfortable, they're heated, uh, power adjustable, and uh, overall they're really great seats, but especially for a thin guy like myself, I mean, I don't have to adjust anything, it's just these seats are really nice and snug and feel pretty great. Next Next the steering wheel in the 2017 GTR Nismo, which is very cool. It's one of the new enhancements here for 2017, all new steering wheel um, that just looks really great. I love the airbag cover with the uh, GTR emblem there in the middle and the stitching around it. It does have a few more buttons than before, um, but you know, it's not overly cluttered or anything and it's still a great wheel. It has an awesome 93 grip, nice little 10 and 2 notches. It's Alcantara wrapped. I love the red stripe at the top. Uh, and now the shift paddles are mounted to the steering wheel instead of the steering column, which is a big change. Um, they don't feel as nice as the old Magnesium paddles which really were a nice heavy-duty metal these feel like they're probably plastic um, feel like metal a little bit but uh, not as nice of quality that's one thing has actually gone down I think otherwise uh, the interior is much nicer I think here in the 2017s uh, but at, next is the uh, gauges here which are mostly unchanged uh, but look great in Nismo form especially with uh, the red background you have on the tachometer and uh, oh they just look so cool very basic still you know with a little black and white screen there um, down on the bottom and a gear indicator and that's it but, you know, you have plenty of info on the right-hand side here if you want uh, more as far as, you know, data is with your driving and, you know, what the car is doing. Um, all the main stuff is right there in front of you. That's all you need, and it's nice and simple and looks great. But coming over to the center of the dashboard here, this is where the biggest changes happened. Um, you can see there's an all-new screen up top here. It's a uh, touch screen um, and, you know, it's kind of a, more like the normal Nissan screens you see in other Nissan products. It still does have all the same great tele telemetry that you had in the other uh, GTRs of the past, uh, but now you do still have, um, you know, additional functionality and a nicer setup there for your radio and all those types of things, navigation and whatnot, all is up there and uh, looks a lot better than before. It's a larger screen I think than before as well and again it's still a uh, basic Nissan stuff not overly impressive honestly um, it kind of tries to do an impression of a Uconnect touchscreen with all the little menu things at the bottom I mean it's decent enough but it's not the best in class by any means um, but a nice little improvement nonetheless and then coming down you have uh, two new air vents here and then you have your climate controls which are a nice little separate knob and this whole setup is kind of nicer they said they've minimized the amount of buttons uh, over prior year uh, GTRs and so it's definitely cleaner I really like the way that it looks down here just you know simple uh, dials there for uh, adjusting your temperature and then you have your three toggles down here below like you've always had in GTRs uh, for the R35 generation um, one for your rear diff one for your uh, adjustable dampers and then one for the traction and stability control then you have your engine stop start button and a nice little uh, shifter here uh, for this uh, you know dual clutch transmission you have in this vehicle you also do have another little toggle here to control uh, the map and you know all the stuff going on with the touchscreen up there as well. Storage space in the GTR is fairly limited, but again, we're talking about basically a race car for the street, especially in Nismo form. But anyway, you have a nice uh, map pocket here in the door. Um, that is a pocket that, you know, expands, so you could probably fit a bottle in there as well, but there isn't any dedicated cutout. Coming over to the center, you have two uh, cup holders that are a little bit on the smallish side, but um, still totally usable. And then you have a center armrest um, that's uh, nice and softly padded. It feels pretty good, although it's a little firmer towards the edge here, um, but still nice nonetheless. And you 
open that up and you have a very shallow little cubby. You could fit probably about a pair of sunglasses, that's about it. You also have two USB jacks, an auxiliary jack, and a power outlet in there. Um, but that's really it as far as storage space. They still could use a lot more. You do have a sunglasses holder up here um, out of the ceiling, um, and that's about it. Um, so not this car's strong suit by any means, but again, I don't think most GTR buyers will mind. Backseat space in the GTR though is something that some buyers may mind. Uh, I'm five foot nine and I cannot fit behind myself. So uh, it's very tight back there. You know, small children and you know, really small people uh, could fit back there if you're a shorter driver and can pull the seat up a little bit more. But it's basically a non-usable backseat for the most part. Uh, but it is nice uh, for those that could potentially fit back there. You have a cup holder and the both subwoofers are back there as well. And it looks comfortable. Um, but yeah, not a ton of space back there. Trunk space in the GTR is very good though. It's a very deep trunk, one of the deepest trunks out there. Uh, you feel like you're like looking down into a well with that trunk. I mean, it is so deep. Um, and the opening isn't super big, but you can still easily fit, you know, one or two suitcases in there with ease. All right, so start and go for a drive. The uh, GTR Nismo has the same basic key as all the GTRs of the past here. It's just a little plastic key. It has some metal buttons though. And uh, yeah, but those have been unchanged, I think, since the GTR debuted. Uh, but a decent key nonetheless. And of course, it's keyless entry, push button start. So you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the end to start button. And it roars to life. All right, so setting off in the 2017 Nissan GTR Nismo. Well, the first thing that you notice about these things is the sound deadening. They don't really put a lot of sound deadening around the wheel wells and the gearbox and stuff. You can always hear all the mechanical bits working here in the in the transmission and uh, all the little pebbles kicking up into the fenders. That's something that's a hallmark of GTRs uh, that you don't really see in a lot of cars these days. You just hear every little thing. It really makes you feel connected to the driving experience, though. Um, another thing that makes you feel really connected is the steering. I'm telling you, I feel so much of the steering wheel, even doing 29 miles per hour. Um, it's kind of crazy just how much feel you get here through the steering wheel already. Uh, other things to note, the visibility in the GTR is pretty good. You have a pretty nicely sized windshield there you can see out of. Side windows in the GTR are also really great with the B pillar that's way far back there, so very easy to see out of. Uh, and then view out of the back is also pretty easy. You do have that large uh, carbon fiber spoiler there that kind of splits your vision, and at the right angle will get in the way sometimes but overall it's fairly thin and just fun to look at. All right, so let's turn down onto the straight road here and see how the GTR Nismo does. Got in manual mode, first gear. Here we go. <laughs> Jeez, I'm like they lifted up out of my seat. <laughs> Holy crap. is still super quick. <laughs> oh man, I could get myself into trouble with this thing. <laughs> it's just, I love the GTRs, the way they tune the gearing in these things. They just rip like crazy and it is just so much fun. Uh, the way that the gearing is so short, I mean, you don't even have time to pull a paddle for first. But it just automatically up just a second because it's like by the time my brain is like computing, Holy crap, I'm in red line. It's already like, nope, I got you. I'm gonna upshift up for you because it's just, I can't. Oh man, it's just crazy. <laughs> it sounds good too. I mean, you know, with the Nismo here, you have a louder titanium exhaust. Um, it sounds good. I mean, it's still not as crazy as you know, some of the aftermarket setups for the GTR that sound just downright awesome. Um, this does sound nice and meaty and throaty though, and I do like the way it sounds a lot. 
but yeah, I mean the steering feel, and I mean these tires aren't super wide either. They're uh, 255 wide in the front and 285 in the rear. But I mean, I just think, I feel like these tires just want to tramp line everywhere and just go into every little divot. But I mean, I just feel so much through the steering wheel. It's just so communicative and so much more raw than other GTRs in the past have been. That's the one thing that I'm really noticing here about the GTR is it's just you're so connected to the driving experience, and it's just really actually a lot more analog uh, than GTRs of the past, which I'm really loving. But yeah, now that the road's gotten a little bumpier here, it is certainly apparent that this suspension is still fairly stiff, especially in the Nismo version. If you were to go for the standard GTR, I'm sure it'd be a little bit softer, but I even have the dampers in the comfort mode, and I'm still feeling every groove in the road, which is, again, very good if that's what you want, um, you know, but for those that are looking for something a little more comfortable, uh, this probably isn't it. Um, but it is fun, though. It's not jarring, really. It's at least in comfort mode here, um, even on a pretty rough road like this with its fair share of imperfections. Uh, it still it does have, uh, you know, a reasonable amount of give, so it's not rattling out your fillings, but it's uh, still definitely a firm ride, that's for sure. But, I mean, it's really just so sharp with its handling. I mean, it is really just so flat. I, you, you actually feel like you're in a race car. I mean, it's just like... It's impressive. The thing that's really impressive though is just how much grip this thing has. I mean, I'm not anywhere near its limits. You have to go to a racetrack to get close to this thing's limits. But I'm just amazed at just how flat and direct and precise it feels considering how skinny the tires are. Um, you know, being only 255 in the front, 285 in the rear. I mean, this feels just as flat and sharp as like a Camaro ZL1 with, you know, it's like 295 wide tires or however wide they, they are on those things where it's just super wide. Um, you know, this feels like it's got that much tread with how much grip it has um, but it's just you know the skinnier tires just uh, with this all-wheel drive system combined with just how well this suspension is set up it just feels so incredibly precise and flat <laughs> and any gear you really ask of it uh, for more power it just gives it to you pretty ferociously honestly it's just it's so much fun. I mean, at any sane speeds on any public roads, this thing is never going to break a sweat. It's just doing whatever you ask of it. It's like, okay, I'm bored. What do you got next for me? But yeah, on a twisty mountain road, even one that's rough like this one, this thing just eats it up. It loves it. This is where this thing really shines. Although the straight line performance is epic and mind-blowing, um, the handling, I mean, this thing pulls uh, way more Gs, you know, like I said, on the track than you can ever even approach on the street here. And this thing's limits are just so high. This really is a car you can only fully enjoy on the track, of course. Uh, you know, if you want something that's a little better set up for daily driving, I probably would just suggest the normal GTR. Um, but if you do want a track weapon, this thing is certainly it, I'm sure of that. And these things, I mean, you know, although it has the old drive system and the uh, dual clutch and all this kind of stuff, it's fairly lightweight still. These only weigh around 3,900 pounds. Uh, the Nismo has gone to greater lengths uh, for light weighting measures. You know, I think the trunk is carbon fiber, you got the carbon fiber for spoiler, um, and they've done a bunch of other things to make it lighter as well. And so, um, you know, it's a little lighter than a standard GTR, although, like I said, I'm not sure how much you would feel that on the street, because, like I said, they're all very capable uh, performers on the street, but on the track, I'm sure you can certainly feel the weight savings. But yeah, even if you can't get close to this thing's limits on the streets, it's still a ton of fun even to drive at five tenths or even less, you know, it's just between those acceleration pulls and just the, the rawness of this vehicle and all the sensations you hear and feel um, with the way this thing is set up, uh, that just makes it fun even at low speeds. And if nothing else, you can just do second gear pulls all day. It's just... <laughs> yep, that is all the fun you need right there. It's like a roller coaster. <laughs> I can actually feel like pressure being put on like my eyeballs in their sockets. Like just the amount of acceleration, especially in second gear, seems even more extreme than first sometimes. It's just, and third is crazy too. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I absolutely love the GTR here. It's just, you know, mind-blowing with its performance. I mean, the only things not to like, honestly, are, uh, you know, the stiffer suspension. I mean, everything is razor sharp with the brake pedal, with the throttle response, with the steering, with uh, the suspension setup. Everything is definitely razor sharp. And so there's really, I mean, unless you don't like the stiff ride, you don't want something this uh, intense as far as, you know, suspension setups go, then you might not like this. But otherwise, how can you not like the GTR? The only thing that's tough to swallow with the GTR is the price. For the Nismo version especially, 170 
$27,000 for this one, which is uh, a good amount of uh, chunk of change higher than a standard GTR, which is already really expensive these days, uh, you know, well over $100,000, I think 110 or so. And so this being, you know, 60 grand more, is it 60 grand better than a regular GTR? Maybe if you're going to track it a lot. Otherwise, I think, you know, the standard GTR is plenty and still very much fun and a lot more comfortable, I think, as well. And um, so, yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong with either one, really, but um, it's an absolute blast to drive. And, uh, yeah, so huge thanks once again to Nissan for allowing me to review this awesome Nismo GTR for you guys today. One last thing is these brakes, these massive Brembo brakes. I mean, they feel like they just have an endless amount of stopping ability, at least on the road here. It's really uh, pretty crazy. All right, let's do one last acceleration. It's just too much fun. <laughs> I dare you put someone in the passenger seat of this thing do that and if they don't at least smile there is something wrong with you it is just <laughs> so much fun oh but anyway let me know all your thoughts about the GTR Nismo here in the comments below thank you guys very much for watching I'll see you next time take care